Hi there. This video will show you three ways to get light shows going on your circuit. The first method doesn't require any external gear. You'll be creating a light show entirely on your circuit. The result is something like this. Or like this. The other two methods require a computer and Ableton. So method number two uses MIDI effects. And don't worry, I'll explain everything. Here you can see that plus was a uh, MIDI effect triggered on channel two, and this sort of dot animation uh, is triggered on a different set of notes also on channel two. The third method for creating animations is with MIDI clips, not MIDI effects. MIDI clips that are triggered either by a sequence um, or by pressing buttons like that. All the animations you're seeing are MIDI clips that are either sequenced or triggered by the circuit, but are stored and programmed in Ableton. So let's see how it's done. The way these animations work is by sending notes to a muted synth track. So the first thing you need to do is pick the synth track you want to use for the light show whether the purple synth number one or green synth number two. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you've picked your scale for the song and don't change it later on because the notes correspond to lights and if you change the scale, you're gonna get a completely different result. And you can't use chromatic mode because not all the pads light up in that mode. So pick any scale you want except chromatic, pick any key you want and stick to it, at least for the duration of your song. Once you've picked your scale, go to note mode and then press shift note to see all the, the pads light up. Now this is going to be your canvas. These four octaves are where you're going to be drawing notes. Um, so remember which octave is the starting octave for this range because octaves below or above it won't be seen. So always make sure you're programming notes in these four octaves so that you can see them later on. Now, since the light show is really notes programmed over time, what you're going to want to do is go to the mixer, make sure your track is on, but muted all the way down because you don't want to hear the notes, you just want to have them show lights. So certainly the disadvantage here is that you've got to give up a synth track. Now, if you're thinking in the song that I just heard, there was a lot going on, you're right, because what we're doing is we're playing melodies with samples using a method already shown on this channel. If you didn't see that video yet, there's going to be a link in the description on how to play melodies with samples. So Drum Track 3 is a sampled synth that's being pitched using the sample template. Our drums are on Drum Track 2. Kick and snare. Drum Track 1 is a sampled bass that's also pitched using the uh, sample pitching template described in this channel. And then drum track four is our hi-hats and occasional filter sweep. So let's get down to the business of actually creating the animation. So we want to make these four squares appear one after the other. The way to do that is simply push the step that you want them to appear and punch those notes in, go to the next step, punch those notes in. For steps three and four, we're gonna to need to go down octaves because those notes, appear, those notes appear on the bottom octaves and this is step four. That's basically it. So we have one, two, three, four steps. Use the gate to keep the notes active throughout each step. So we have a four note gate. Go back to shift note. Now this more elaborate animation is done using exactly the same process only across multiple patterns and with more frequent steps. So the one, two, three, four, you can see here at the top of the one, two, and three, and if I scroll down the octaves, that's the bottom of the number one, the bottom of the number two, and the bottom of number three. And that's basically it. Don't forget to go back to the 
right octave, otherwise your animation will appear shifted. So if I play the animation like this, you can see we're just seeing the bottom of the animation. Go up a couple of octaves, and everything is okay. The two main limitations of this method of creating animations is that you can only have six lights running simultaneously, and you can't have steps more frequent than every beat in the pattern. You can't have faster animations going. But the advantage, of course, is that they run on the circuit, and on the circuit alone, you don't need a computer, and you don't need Ableton. All right, on to methods two and three. So if you want to create animations with more than six simultaneous lights, or with lights that are faster than, um, than just every beat, there are two ways to do that. Number one is using MIDI effects. Now there are a ton of tutorials on the web uh, made for the launch pad, but basically everything that's there applies here. Uh, what we're doing is taking a MIDI effect, in this case it's a chord effect, and applying it to a note that's played through the circuit. Every additional shift note in the chord effect is another light, and you can see here I'm moving a dot around uh, the shift 6, and that is adding another light to the shape. Now instead of a cross, we have a sort of like a elongated left uh, hand cross. Using MIDI effect tracks, you can have different pads on the circuit activate different MIDI effects. So here we have an arpeggiator effect being activated by the bottom range of notes. And we can play with the parameters, we can change the repeats, we can change the speed. So if this method of creating animations interests you, uh, there are a ton of Launchpad tutorials out there on the web. I've added links to a few good ones in the description. Um, and you can do a lot of very interesting and very uh, elaborate effects using this method. Finally, the third way to create animations on the circuit, uh, also using Ableton, is using MIDI clips. I'm going to turn off MIDI track 2. This is the track that I use for my MIDI effects. And then in my setup, in my arrangement here, I have MIDI track 1 for triggering MIDI animations, MIDI clips, and MIDI track 3 for creating and sequencing MIDI clips. Each of the slots here represents a pre-programmed animation. Every time I press play on the clip, it starts the animation, and also starts the circuit, so the rest of the notes are playing too. And you can see the animation as you go along. I'm going to double click one of the clips, and this is how the notes are arranged to play the lights. Let's create a new clip. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure the entire four octave note range is visible in my piano roll, from the bottom note all the way to the top. So this is where my animation is going to happen. And from that point on, creating the animation is really easy. Just press the note where you want the animation to start, then double click that note in the piano roll, go on to the next one, double click that, and so on. I'm going for sort of like a dot that comes in from the right and then splits into two directions going up. You'll notice I'm following the markers on the left. Every time I press a pad, it shows me where to double click. So that's it. We'll keep it simple. That's my, uh, my fancy new pattern. And when I'm good to go, I will go up to the clip where I recorded this, hit play, and that's our animation. Now, don't forget, this animation will only work in the scale at which you set your circuit, because we're hitting specific notes and recording those notes. So if you change the scale, not all the notes are going to be seen. It's not going to work well. So maintain your scales. Once you've programmed your notes, there are a couple tricks you can do, like increase the length. And that sort of makes the animation flow better and have a tail. You can shorten it to make it faster. Or even faster. Make it slow again. Reverse it. Let's keep it at this. And Again, there are a bunch of tutorials on how to create MIDI clip animations out there for the launch pad. Uh, whatever is said there applies really nicely to animations on the circuit as well. The only difference is that the launch pad supports different color lights. 
uh, based on the velocity of the nodes, whereas the circuit currently uh, only turns lights on or off. So nodes can, can be either the background color of the synth or white. Now, if you have Max for Live, and this is included in uh, Ableton Suite, I'm not sure it's included in, uh, in the standard version, um, then you can take the animations even further and trigger them not just as part of a clip in Ableton, but also through notes coming out of the circuit. And the way that that works is with a Max for Live plugin created by someone called Exige. Um, and that's what you see here on the left. Now, I want to keep this tutorial short, uh, so I'll put links in the description for uh, very good tutorials that show you how to install and how to use uh, this plugin. But the idea is that you create chains. Every chain is a MIDI clip that's triggered by a note. The note being this little line here uh, on the piano roll that represents the pad on the circuit that triggers the animation. Now, the way that this is used with the circuit, or at least the way that I choose to sequence these, uh, these animations, is I've taken the pads below the four octaves that are visible and programmed every note in that row that's below the visible octaves to trigger a different animation. So if we want to add the amazing explosion animation that we just created to this, uh, to this clip, I just duplicate the chain on the bottom, pick the note that I want to trigger that animation, press it, and that here it appears up there, it's F sharp six, take the trigger node and move it up to F sharp six, and now the final step in Ableton is to take our MIDI clip, the one we created before, and to drag it onto the effects chain, and now that explode effect is associated with F sharp six. Now back to the circuit, F sharp six is really just that top right pad above the four octaves that are visible. So what I'm going to do is go up to that octave, and then program the first note in the sequence to trigger that pad. And it's as easy as that. Now our circuit is sequencing animations in Ableton. We go back down to the right four octaves. Now you can see our beautiful explode effect is part of that four effect sequence. Finally, animations can be triggered uh, with a pad, not just uh, in a sequence, but also live, just like uh, this animation. So let's say I want to pick this pad, go to Ableton, see what note it lights up, drag my trigger note down to it, and that's it. Now I can play this pad live and trigger our explode animation whenever I want as the clip is playing back. That's it. There's a lot more information in the clips linked in the description to this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to see more, subscribe. Thanks for watching.